Now this morning you just can't imagine. We have another day of rain. <laughs> no painting. Karen has told me we have a lot of stuff to do today, so I'm going to assume it's going to be a very short day. So what I'm going to try to do, uh, and I have a couple of choices, I'm going to try to pick out one of the smaller projects that I can get done today, because that will not involve paint, uh, not involve paint thinner, and there's one, one thing I do have to do, and I have to do it very soon because I'm ready to start assembling a fairing. The mirror block off plates, I had started with John Pothier at one time to try to figure out a way we could make them a little, uh, a little different than the, a standard thing. And in the end, it turns out it's the way the bike is put together, it's not going to be that easy. So I'm just going to make traditional mirror block off plates today. And I'll try to show how I do it on the video. It's not as easy as you think it is. It's not a straightforward thing. And it's got to be done pretty accurately. Luckily, we've done it before. We've done it one, two, four times already. So it should be a piece of cake. And it should be fun to see how to do it. Inexpensive. You don't have to spend any money. Of course, if you want to, you can go to the motorcycle uh, places and they all make <laughs> they for, for 20 bucks or whatever they are. But it's nice to be able to make it. I think it's nice to be able to make it yourself. We are one because I've had several, several sets of mirrors and several different things here. I, I really, I saw that you could buy these, and I, I thought, what's the point of buying them? I can make them in, in a, you know, a couple hours, and I can make them exactly how I want them. When I made the ones for the, what's nice about this, I was thinking too, I could paint them to match. I, I kind of like them with, with a shine, and I do have some anodized gold aluminum downstairs, but I don't know. that. So anyway, it's going to give me something to think about today, and... A small project I can do on a rainy day for almost no money, and it'll just be a little bit of a labor of love. Now, because we don't have all the bracketing on, I have to put all the bracketing together on this. I think I, think I might even be able to do it without bringing it out here. But there's some very accurate holes have to be drilled on both sides, because on, on the motorcycle with mirrors that are attached on the stalks, they have to be pretty, uh, pretty rigid and pretty strong. And they are on this bike. There's just a lot of hardware there that I need to, I need accurate, accurate fits. I don't want to have sloppy fits. And the FCR ones, I think we made last year. I made them on video, but I'm not, I'm not really remembering. But again, it's a small piece, a small detail. I have found, and of course I've documented it all on video, how much better I liked having them, the, the mirrors you can see out of, but of course, the problem is a lot of people like the Macho Man mirrors, and uh, well, you know, I maybe I, I haven't been a Macho Man for a long time, maybe for 74 years. I'm not so sure. Now, one thing we have in our favor, I've got plenty of material, and I've got plenty of used brackets for making camera mounts. I've got buckets of parts here. I even got some downstairs. So the raw material, but if you didn't have any, you can buy it at Lowe's. You buy a strip of that stuff for under 10 bucks. And I always think, in my case, one of the things I enjoy every morning, I'm telling you, I'm like, like a, uh, addicted. I come out here and just to oogle the bikes, even the ones I'm not working on, and just, I look at every bike here, is, is basically a year of my life, for winter, renovating it, or whatever you want to call it, restoring it, painting it, polishing it, and in the end, you get to keep the bikes. So it's funny, before I came out here, Karen did her morning weather check, which she always does for me, and she laughed. She says, you're not painting anything today. And when I look, poke my nose outside, come out here to change the chargers, she's right. So sometimes in the morning, I pretend I'm Jay Leno. I come out here and I say, well, yeah, okay, guys, here we go. I got to get my one mechanic, Joe Blow, to work on this bike, and I'll get uh, Sammy to work on this bike, and I'll get somebody else to do this polishing and I'll get somebody else to steam clean this and I'll I'll make up some parts and then da, 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 I'll do this and I'll do that and then I think wait a minute I'm the luckiest guy in the world I get to do it all myself Jay my apologies but I have to tell you I'm I might be having as much fun as you not really but I could pretend and it is supposed to rain for the next couple of days so we're gonna plant some indoor activity get those those mirror block off plates made today 
Going in the morning, that coffee on a rainy day when you get the chill out of your bones from flipping those battery chargers. That coffee, oh, I can't tell you. Oh, the birds are singing to the oldies. <laughs> they got those nice low seeds going on. What a great way to have my coffee in the morning, sitting right here. A nice cup of coffee. A nice ride. The summer's coming. A month, two months from now, we'll be out there cross-planing it up and who knows what. Visiting Luciano up at Choppers. Oh my God. What a great way to start the day. Absolutely great way to start the day. Look at all the leaves on the trees. Oh, where do those leaves go? <laughs> More coffee. So this will give our wheels at least one extra day to dry. Our wheel, it still has to be buffed. The part we assembled yesterday, we'll be ready to do the major assembly on that once we make the mirror block off plates. The wheel is drying up. The touch-up we did worked great. All of the buffing on this paint, just the carbon fiber parts we made, this whole project has just been just very satisfying. Now, like a lot of things in life, Something that looks real simple. Sometimes it gets a little more complicated in this case And I'll just lay this out. Of course, this is not true of all motorcycles. They're all a little bit different But what we have is I have the original mirror mounts that come with the motorcycle for the mirrors that are fairing mounted and I have a little gasket here that I'm going to line up with the part This is the stalk that holds it and I can see that the holes are in the very end of it. And if I were to use this, I'd be at the very end of the holes. So that, that's going to make it easy to lay out the template. Because what I have to do is look at this up here and make sure I have the template shape exactly what I want. Because there's a little recess in the fairing. In fact, it's, at least it's symmetrical. It's actually not symmetrical. It's this this is not an exact match, so I'm going to have to fine-tune it So the first thing will be is get a piece of paper and Make up a pattern of the shape out of a piece of ordinary paper that I want to have So I can see how big of a piece of aluminum I need So the reason I need to get the original mirrors that came with the bike And it's not them. I need to find exactly the ones they are because the shape that's in the fairing and the shape that's on these accessory mirrors was not not exactly the same That looks like the shape. This must be the mirrors that came with the bike. I guess we're gonna find out I have three bags like this full of mirrors. So it's if I don't find it in here It's going to be somewhere else, but the problem is the shape of the bottom and the shape of this are just different enough that I don't want to use and I notice they have left and right so maybe they're not even symmetrical even though they do fit but I want to, this getting this pattern accurate is a really important part of this job because I don't want to have the pattern and the, the the recess that's in the mirror just not line up I want it to be really really nice and close so you can see this piece is a is a dedicated it's recess. That's not recess. It's the opposite of recess. And this piece is a a pretty accurate fit. So yes, it is. So what it, what it tells me is I can use this to make my pattern with. This will make it easier. But the problem is, I don't want to use. I want the bolt holes to be a nice tight fit. So I'm not going to put the. Let me see if I. I got to think this through. If I put the bolts and I want to have it at least I want to tight. Okay, so I need to I need to use these. Okay, I need to have see I'm trying to determine where I need to have a tight fit. I need a tight fit. I don't want this to do this. I want this and this I guess what they did, yeah, they just used a little recess in the mirror. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to have to come up with a way of of getting around this. Or maybe make or get some special bolts. I have to think this through. This is one of those tricky little things. It gets tricky because having this that it even moves just a little bit is going to be a problem. So what I want to have, I want to take a piece of scrap material here 
and I do have scrap carbon fiber and I'm just trying to figure where this is going to be I could actually I could actually make these out of carbon fiber but I thought about that uh, I'm not so sure what I want to get and it's always this is from modeling here here we go I wanted a piece of light plywood that I could make my pattern on plywood not paper just as a way of making it a little bit more accurately yeah we got plenty of this so making a plywood pattern accurate hole spacing accurate outline that'll be worth doing because it'll just make it easier to get it into the aluminum that way so the first step is to mark the plywood and I want to get two very accurate holes because the holes have to are going to position this without the holes if I just cut the outside of this and then try to drill the holes it's not going to be as accurate it's always easier for me anyway to drill the holes first now a step drill is usually the best for doing this kind of a cut on light plywood usually gets you pretty accurate holes I got the holes drilled and I've got to take into account that little step and I've already got I've already thought of a way I can deal with that so now I need because I have that laid in there nice I can trace the outline of this and hopefully very accurately cut this out now it's always good in this case leave everything a little on a plus side because once I cut this it'll be very easy to just run it over on a belt sander but that's basically the shape we need now I'm thinking I don't need the holes this big because I can put I can put little bushings in the fairing now, oh, the only difference I'm going to do is make sure that the holes I drill actually in the aluminum are an exact match to this and rather than having these parts attached to the to the mirror I'll make up two little bushings on the lathe if I don't have any that fit but that's going to be a pretty accurate pattern when I'm done now a lot of times in the past when I tried to do something like this and I tried to skimp on the time it took to make the pattern yeah you save a few minutes doing that and then you wind up over at the belt sander for an extra half an hour so I'm trying to be I'm trying not to be penny wise and pound foolish and get an accurate pattern and dealing with those oversized holes I think the little bushings are the easiest way to do it so we got a, a good start for our pattern right here and that should be I'm going to check the other mirror to make sure they're both symmetrical because there is a left and there is a right that should be just about right since we're not going to use the mirror and we're going to use bolts now but the most important thing of all is to get these two holes and I'll have to do it with a micrometer that they're accurate and centered on the actual aluminum part now the easiest way to do it of course is when I may as well just show it when I get the piece of aluminum is lay out the holes first that's always the best way to do it and it's always good if you have two holes that, like this do it with a micrometer don't just do it by eyeball and then you have to make the holes so big and egg-shaped it, it really is worth taking a little time to do this right so in my uh, bucket of scrap I have some old I actually have some gold stuff I could use it's just scraps but I did have a piece that I think will be more appropriate let's just yeah we got plenty of room on this but first thing I want to do before I even start this is clean this up and I can start, I can lay out the parts. All right, so I can lay this out with a uh, just an ordinary piece of masking tape. And I've already gotten a word that Karen is getting ready to go on some of the little errands she has to do today. We're going to go together, of course, and... I don't know how this day is going to play out, but it'd be nice to have these, at least have these ready at the end of the day. Okay, so I can get two of them on there. That's not going to be a problem. And I know the whole spacing is, uh, is 400 thousandths. 
So just one little one little thing we can make in our favor here. And I want to make this as accurate as possible. But I know I don't need, let's see, I'll make sure I don't I don't get too cute. The problem always is that you get too cute. Okay, so I can get one. And now I need to to lay this out. Like we're building a rocket ship to the moon here. But that's the spacing. Anyway, that's the, the part that's going to matter here. So let me lay this out. And always when you're a modeler, you know all about making patterns and machine shop pattern making. But sometimes it's, you look at a part and you say, how, how am I going to make that? Well. That's basically what we're going to, I'll make another one over here and we'll be ready to drill the holes and make sure they're 400,000 support and I'll do them accurately to the bolts that we're going to use. And then inside the fairing, I'll have to make that little bushing. So that it's the best of all worlds and I've really got that I have this, this piece I can polish, have the button head bolts and inside, and the problem is this, it's a little difficult getting at those bolts. So I'll have to just be thinking that through, make sure I get those bolts or I need to make up a, a little bit of a unique wrench or something at some point in time. All right, so the next step on this is I want to make sure those bolt holes are 400 thousandths apart. I'm going to spot each hole with a small drill and then make sure, absolutely sure, before I put the taper drill in that I've got these centered because I don't want to have to egg shape these holes when I'm done. sure I have this edge to edge edge to edge now I can open up these holes to the diameter of the bolts this ought to be relatively simple now I when I used to uh, spend time in a machine shop I could usually do this by eye I can't really it's too big I can't really do it by eye anymore because I've been away for so long but we want, we want a 200. They, the eyes fail you at some point in time. One's too big, one's too small. We, we, we want to get an accurate drill here. It may take forever. Who knows? So we do have a nice fit here. That's going to be fine. And as soon as we get back from doing our errands, I'll cut these out and polish them. Boy, we have had our share of rainy days and rainy errand days. And boy, I'm glad. I'm always saying how leapfrogging has been the only reason I've been able to get these restorations done. Without leapfrogging, I'd never be able to get this stuff done. And we're off to do our errands. What a load of fun. Gotta stay healthy. Stay healthy. That's the main thing. Keep that Grandpa Wendy alive. <laughs> Eat a banana a day. Of course, the main thing is we get plenty of vegetables there. I don't want to have, I don't want to have any short supply of vegetables today. Oh my God. Oh, it's always good to be home and know that you have a whole car full of vegetables. What fun. So the next step is to cut these out, rough cut them out. Once I know the holes are in perfect alignment, and I would never want to cut these out first and then try to drill the holes. The thing is, drill the holes first.
Now with those parts cut and trimmed and the edges smoothed off, now we're ready to do a final fit before I do the polish. I want to put it on the actual, on the part of the fairing. Make sure I don't want to, because here's what I can do. If it's a little oversized or misshapen, I can just run it over to the belt sander before I actually spend all the time polishing it. What I want to make sure is I've got exactly the shape I want here. Pretty good. Very good. So we're ready to take these parts and I need to do one final check on this. I know this is redundant, but I want to check it anyway. And those holes are a perfect line. This is the bracket. I'm really just checking the 400,000 separation of the holes. And with that, we're ready to polish. So to polish these parts, the next thing, we know that they're, they're a really good fit, we know they're accurate. Next thing is just to get a nice polished finish, actually only on one side, but we'll clean up both sides a little bit. Peel the tape off, we know we've got it relatively accurate. Now there's a lot of things, I always look, since these are symmetrical, I always look at both sides to see if there's a dent or a piece missing in one side or the other, there isn't. So I can take some 2000 Indasa sandpaper. I have some SOS pad and 2000, and I'll show just, just the basic of polishing up any piece of aluminum, and it wouldn't matter. The softer the aluminum is, the quicker it's going to buff, but the quicker it's going to oxidize too. So 2024, 7075, any of the alloys, they're going to be a little bit more difficult because they're harder aluminum. So they're, they're a little more effort to get the scratches out of and get polished, but once you polish them, they stay polished a lot better. Conversely, the thing when you buy aluminum in Lowe's or low-end aluminum, I call it, it's really almost butter, really. I made all those camera mounts, made about 150 camera mounts so for, the, for all the bikes. And what those things are, very easy to cut, a hacksaw, a Dremel tool, very easy to sand, very easy to polish. And in this case, I'm not sure what this what this is if it's if it's 2024 or whatever because I don't remember what part I made out of it. And when I was involved in the machine shop, I used to come home with scraps of 2024 all the time. And we used to make the landing gears for the for the model planes at a 7075. And because those are aircraft alloys, they really polish up nice, but there are a lot of work to polish up too. Now I thought one of the things for the future I could do is make a spare set of these. And I, John and I had talked about this, and I'm not sure it's, it's ever gonna to come to fruition, but as an alternative way of, see, not seeing this in the final motorcycle, make some kind of a little, a cover for this or something. But I'm not sure this is gonna be that objectionable once it's all polished up. I won't really know until I get it all polished up. Now, people that are professional polishers, not myself, always say you sand in one direction until you can't see the, the scratches, and then you sand in this direction until you don't see the scratches from that direction. And so I've always been of the opinion that I just sand randomly, but when it comes to polishing technology, I've got quite a bit of experience, and a lot of the stuff has come out nice with very, very low effort. None of these things require a big buck investment. The, the polishing wheel is, I think it was 75 bucks or something, and I got it when it's on sale with a coupon. And you know, I'm never gonna wear it out in my lifetime, so I really have it forever. But anyway, just a thorough bu buffing with, not buffing, polishing with this. Now let me just show this. The reason I want to do this, I want to do this in real time how much time I would devote to that part of it. Okay, so with that in mind, let me just dry it up. Now you'll see there's hundreds of little scratches on this. Well, we're gonna sand it until those scratches go away, but I can see, let's see if I can get it up close. I'm not sure you can. I'm not sure, I it's a little difficult to get this. Yeah, I can't with the light where it is. But anyway, let's see if I can, down there any better? 
anyway we do have scratches in it so one of the ways and i did i wanted to do it without a camera cut if if the 2000 isn't doing it the way you want good old sos is usually pretty good at doing it getting out scratches too but we want to get most of the scratches out i'm not looking to get every single one out most of them and in a final little bit i can do on a buffing wheel but if you just go over to the buffing wheel with a rough piece of aluminum you're going to stand there for 20 minutes and it's eventually it'll come up but it's never going to be better the best way is to flat sand it any way you can 2000 grit sos pad is good any of these things until you physically can't see scratches and when you don't see scratches in the raw aluminum then you know it's ready to go to the buffing to the wheel now also you have to remember there's, there's a lot of ways to polish things and uh, on an industrial level if you have one of those big giant wheels at your disposal well maybe you can get away with less sanding but i have this the smaller wheel and and there's no reason by the way and i wanted to mention this there's no reason you can't do this by hand without a buffing wheel it's just going to take a little time just like buffing out a wheel yeah it just takes time it's there's no other word I have for it except labor of love. Now, I try to show the first one in real time. I try to show, actually, I wanted to show what, I'm going to try to do this with a macro lens, but I'm not sure the macro lens is going to do exactly what I want. So let's see if you can see this up close. Let's see, are there any scratches still in it? Yeah, still a few, but I want to show it right at the end. Now, I don't know, again, I don't know if the macro lens is picking up what this looks like. We have... The scratches from the 2000 grit paper and from the SOS, but not the scratches that we have on the side when we started. You can see how big the scratches were from the cleanup wheel. And we've got it down to where the scratches. And by the way, even if you were buffing out an engine case or a, you know, a sprocket, no matter what you do, when you want to polish something up, there's definitely rules of engagement and there's always room for a little experimenting too. Okay, the next step is to go over to the buffing wheel and see if these parts are going to buff up as quickly as I hope they are. And the last little thing is I've got some 8065 on an old buffing pad. And I just want to put a final shine on this. I'll finalize it with some flits for protection. And it'll be one more little piece of the puzzle done very soon. Very, very soon. And just for protection and maybe even a little extra shine, a final thing will be a quick coat of flits. And the flitz is really good. It does at some point. It's 6,000 grit. So if you're going over a polished surface, it'll make it even better. But if you're going over a piece of sandpaper, it's really not going to do that much. One of the good things is it doesn't remove a lot of material. And it really leaves a good corrosion protection. By the way, the same with that material blue diamond. That blue diamond leaves a good coat of protection on it. And in this case, you know, I know the reality of this. This bike is going to get ridden in some inclement weather. We're going to get stuck from 100 miles from home in a rainstorm or whatever. And I don't want it to turn into a rust bucket or a, an oxidation bucket at that point in time. But this is just, just one way I go. I try to get that I have the most protection I possibly can have, especially after I put a lot of time into these parts. And I think you can see how... How nice they came out. And one more little detail, one more little part that I'm sure there are people are going to notice. Well, doesn't matter. I'll notice. Yeah, they really look like they're going to add a nice touch to the motorcycle. Now, one of my goals is always every day to add at least one little part to the project which we've done today very successfully. Parts really came, really came out nice, I'm amazed. 
anyway, of course, you could just go to uh, YouTube or whatever and just uh, eBay and buy them. But there's a certain satisfaction I get out of making parts. Mm, that's just me. I'm, you know, let's face it. Everybody has something else they enjoy in life. And I enjoy working on these older motorcycles and restoring them to better than new condition and then keeping them for the rest of my life. That's the thing. Not to trade them in and not to flip them and, and you know. I wish I had every motorcycle I ever owned. Now if that were true, I would need a Jay Leno garage. And boy, Jay, I, I would have to, uh, I have, have to be paying $1,000 a month rent to rent a garage. But I had every bike that I lust for right now. I owned at least one of them. It's amazing. Amazing. And I thought I needed the money. And where did the money go? Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. One of my goals in the next couple of days is get with all those old DVDs that Ray Straub sent up. And, and pick out some of that footage. There's some footage in there that's priceless. Absolutely priceless. So, and that shirt is, that, that old windy shirt, can you imagine? Anyway, not to belabor this point, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.